Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are showing you another glorious Napoleon Total War online battle. This one fought on Arcola, and I believe the rules for this battle were max to artillery, no fixed. Uh, there was definitely no limit to the amount of lights you could have, obviously, as you can see. And for once, we are going to be doing a run through of the armies without one of the armies being present <laughs> um, as you can see over here there's three armies over there but there's a bit of a prussian general over here hiding so i'm assuming this army here is hiding completely in the forest and you can make what conclusions out of that you can this battle was once again sent in by our good friend carl von clauswitz great friend of the channel sending in another brilliant brilliant online battle and this is a fantastic one at Arcola. Very nice. And I love Arcola. It's one of my favorite maps because of all the different sort of nooks and crannies that you can get into. Different flanking options that are limited by what you're doing. So I love it. I completely love it. So let's go through the battle. Starting to go through the army. Starting with Carl's army over here. So he has in total six of the standard chasseurs. One of the 6th Regiment d'Infanterie Légère, one of the glorious chasseurs. Look at them, they're just a bit more fancy than a normal chasseurs. He has two um, artillery à cheval. Here they are. Very nice, very elite French horse artillery, looking very nice indeed. And he has two of the old guard, two of the glorious old guard. There they are. And one standard militia, French militia. Not National Guard, but they still do wear the revolutionary cockade, which is fantastic. And he has five units of the Chasseur à cheval. These beastly units. We have come to know them as beastly units in this game, haven't we, guys? So the second French army has two six-inch howitzers. Very strong artillery regiments. Um, they're all led by general staff, I believe, on this side. So, But on the other, there is some uh, normal generals. Uh, and the second French army has 12, guys. 12 chasseurs. 12 of the lights. And one of the 6th regiment of chasseurs, if we can find them. There they are. With a bit of experience as well. On top of that, he's got 4 of the chasseur à cheval. So a very, very light focused army there as well. And the third unit, uh, the third French player um, has nine chasseurs plus one. <laughs> so more chasseurs, nine of the chasseurs. I see at this point in time, I can't tell which is which. Uh, well, that's Carl. So this must be this one. Nine of these boys. <laughs> Look how many there are. It's crazy. And then one sixth. A regiment which in here in this blob somewhere guys excuse me coming through excuse me coming through <laughs> um, and he's nine chasseur à cheval as well so huge amount of chasseur à cheval to start with guys huge amount and then we have the portuguese i don't believe we've seen the portuguese yet in an online battle that we've uploaded so that's interesting to see once again and they themselves have three of the Torredor, no, Tiradors, <laughs> of course. Three of these Portuguese rifles, very nice unit indeed. And three of the Cazadores, very nice light infantry unit as well. Fantastic. Top of that, he has two units of the 12 pounder foot artillery. Here they are, ready to go, ready to fire into the enemy. Fantastic. Seven units of the standard. Portuguese infantry looking very nice. Almost Swedish in the blue and yellow, aren't they? Fantastic. And three units, four units, sorry, of the standard Portuguese cav. Looking very nice indeed. Now over on the far side, we have... So we have the three armies set out together. But of course, there's this army as well. And this army, we will just um, add it up together. But the rest of the units in the um, army they have four units of silesian schutzen the elite riflemen of the prussians look at them very nice indeed nine of the fusiliers so the light 
infantry, nine of the Prussian fusiliers. Here they are. And he has uh, 25 musketeers in total. Um, three six-pounder foot artillery. Where are they? Uh, six-pounder horse artillery, should I say. Here they are. Fantastic. Two of the howitzers. Look at these boys. Ready to go. Seven-pounder howitzers. Five units of the lancers. One of the Brandenburg Uhlans, if we can find them. Where are you, Brandenburg Uhlans? I don't believe they're over there. Here they are. Yes, the beautiful Brandenburg Uhlans. Very nice indeed. Another And some of the Tauerses, the Polish Lancer unit. I don't know how you say it. Tauerches. Tauerches. There they are. Very nice. Three units of Hussars, which are all the way in the center. Here they are. So four units of the Hussars. There they are. And Gerhard von Gerhard von Scharhorst is leading one of the armies. I believe the others just have standard general staff. There they are. Yeah, just standard general staff for everyone else. But we have this far army here that has a Brandenburg Uhlan that was hiding in the trees at the start. And as you can see, because Karl's just ignored it and gone away, they have had to come out of hiding. They look like they have... Two units of seven pounder howitzers. Is that one or two? No, one unit and one unit of 12 pounder, um, uh, 12 pounder foot artillery. Then we got Prussian fusiliers. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 units of those. And I believe probably a couple of units of hussars. So a very nice army. Lots and lots of lights. And one of the Lutzko Freikorps which are the militia cav for the Prussians. So lots and lots of lights, guys. An obscene amount of light infantry, honestly, in this battle. And that is because it is, of course, this map where you will be fighting across a lot of rivers. So lots and lots of lights as the first cannon shots rain out upon the chasseurs of the French. Now... Please excuse me if I don't know which armies which when they're all mixed in together because there's no way of telling once you're into the battle replays. Um, we can kind of tell, obviously, this one's Portugal. We know that. But for these other armies, we're not so sure. But I believe that this will be uh, Carl's army coming across. Or is it? No. This is Carl's army with the old guard. So we, we make sure that we remember that this is Carl's army here. He has his artillery a cheval going forward. But as we go forward, a lot of other forces are coming. Look at the Brandenburg Uhlans going for a fight, going for a charge on the light infantry. And that is one thing you've got to remember. Even though you have all these light infantry, cavalry can get rid of them pretty quickly and pretty effectively. Um, so you need to support them well with your cavalry at all times. But here come the French players on this left flank, just probing for weaknesses. And as you can see, even though the cavalry did manage to get across the river, just putting these guys in line and firing at them is a very decent way of getting rid of them. Getting across this choke point is going to be brutal for whoever wants to try that initially because <laughs> getting into that canister shot is not going to be fun. They have a great... Uh, aiming uh, area here. There is a couple of rocks in the way, but apart from that, they can pretty much shred all these guys with canister shot if they want. It's fantastic. But you can see these guys have manned the river. This is one thing with our cola, though. It's one of the maps that does have a huge advantage to one side. This side has the massive advantage because they are closer to the river, and it, that's because it was designed for a scenario battle for... Napoleon Total War. It was not designed for um, multiplayer. It was designed for a scenario, and it was kind of true of the scenario. So, in the scenario, the Austrians are defending this this bridge, and you need to cross it. Um, so, this side gets to start right near the bridge and be able to hold it very early on. Here come the chasseurs, ready to fire into those rifles. Very nice indeed. A lot of them running away though, but you can see he's backing them up with chasseurs in line as well, which is fantastic. Let's just watch these guys firing across the river, doing some serious damage. Those Silesian shuts are taking, taking a hammering there, which is fantastic to see. This bridge is about to get pushed as well, as well as this crossing. And in this crossing, they have no artillery 
to watch the crossing. Although they are bringing these howitzers up, they are not yet set. Over here, these guys are bringing their 12 pounder foot artillery and Carl is bringing his artillery a cheval across, most likely to fire some canister shot into those fools that dare defy us across the river. You can see obviously that this side is not even being attacked at all. So this player should probably have tried to push across and break the flank because you still got a lot of um, a lot of uh, footholds and a lot of little nooks and crannies here. If he'd have managed to shut these, these guys off, he could probably have encircled them and maybe shut all these all of Carl's army back here, which is which would have been a great plan. But of course, they are just holding the river at this point in time, which is fine. Which is fine, but it gives the opponent the initiative. Although, taking the initiative on this map, of course, as we have seen before, is hard. And as you can see, the battle rages on the banks of the river with the chasseurs firing away. Where is the sun? There it is. Look at that beautiful map. Firing across the river. Here come the Cazadores, the Portuguese, ready to fight with the French, which is interesting. Definitely didn't happen in the true Napoleonic Wars, but we shall give it the benefit of the doubt for our historical play. This is fantastic. And here comes the grand charge of the cavalry, trying to push their way across. But of course, the Prussian player does manage to get into square in time, but the cavalry is really just a distraction for pushing more troops across and trying to push these Prussian troops back. Look at this glorious fighting going on here. There's the sun. Beautiful, with all the smoke in the background, fantastic. Over here, we are still very much at the stalemate stage, but the artillery has begun firing the Portuguese artillery. Where is its other unit of artillery? Here it is. It's coming now. It's in a very decent position as well. Look at that. As long as he's not firing into the side of the hill. Doesn't seem to be doing just now, which is good. And he's trying to take out this six pounder artillery. Not done any damage so far, but probably done a little bit of damage to some of these units behind. Yes, it has. But here, back to the grand push by the French. Look at them go. They're just pushing and pushing and pushing. If we look at that Dresden battle that we had a little bit ago, this is what they needed to do. They needed to keep pushing uh, and going forward rather than keeping on retreating. Um, and then pushing, and then retreating, then pushing, like we saw. Um, so this push is a lot more effective. But here comes the artillery, the howitzers, putting down the pain on these guys. But where are the howitzers of these guys, the six-pounder howitzers? Where have they gone? I cannot see them. Are they here? Yes, they are. They're a long way away. So they need to get into the action fast. And here comes Carl's army, his old guard and everything, coming around this far flank to lend a hand to the assault on the river. Very nice indeed. Oh, look at that howitzer shots raining down. And here comes the grand amount of French cavalry coming round. And these guys are going in for all these troops. The Cazadores across the river firing into the enemy. But these chasseurs have just got a little gap to sneak through. And as we all know, the chasseurs are incredibly, incredibly strong, guys. They're one of the strongest units in the uh, uh, in the whole game, I would say. So getting these guys around this flank is crucial. Look, some of the Prussian troops are starting to waver and, run and wanting to run away because they've been shot to pieces. Artillery is shredding down, coming down shooting them and look at this convoy of prussian fusiliers coming to the front line that is beautiful sight to see i've got to say even if they will be destroyed eventually convoy coming to reinforce this right flank and hopefully hold back the tide of the french and portuguese and as you can see the chasseurs have managed to form up now and they are beginning to fire into this square and when they do that there's nothing the square can do about it even though the square is anti-cav it is not anti-rifle <laughs> so getting your chasseurs against squares like this you will always win and here comes the chasseurs um sorry chasseurs a cheval should i say there's too many chasseurs and chasseurs a cheval in this battle for me not to elaborate which one i'm talking about so these chasseurs 
as you can see, pushing across the river now, finally, trying to do some damage on those French, uh, on those Prussian guys. And as you can see, this chasseur a cheval has managed to get into the seven pounder howitzers and do some real damage, probably taking them out once and for all. And he's going for the second seven pounder. Here they are pushing through, just trying to break them, just trying to make sure that they can't come back. This one's only down to five. So that means that even if it's a decent unit, even if it does come back, it'll only be able to man one gun. And here the French have fully cleaned up this flank, which is a fantastic move, mainly thanks due to those chasseurs à cheval. Fantastic, fantastic move. And here comes Carl, I believe this. Let's have a look. I believe this is Carl's army over here, these old guard, and probably these chasseurs in reserve here as well. I believe that is his army. He's got his artillery à cheval still firing, but the floodgates sir. have finally opened for the Portuguese and French troops, and here they come bringing across their troops with zeal, ready to fight. And you can see this Prussian player is now rushing to get in position because he knows that it was a brutal, brutal assault done by them. And you can see there is some cavalry here, some lancers ready to fight. But of course, the chasseurs will get a lot of shots off before they get to them in melee. So even if they do manage to get to them in melee, there is some chasseur à cheval back here as well. Um, as well as some old guard. But these cannons are slightly vulnerable. But here comes more chasseurs ready to fight. And there are some chasseurs hiding here blocking this bridge as well. As well as some Portuguese cavalry. Probably just warning off that Lutzko's Freikorps from attacking the artillery. I love this game, guys. It's so tactical, isn't it? Troops all over the map, ready to fight for their empires. It is fantastic. Let's go. Here come the chasseurs around the flank, pushing hard, 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 and really, really hard. And the floodgates have opened. Look at this. The troops flooding across the river, ready to flank these Prussian devils. Here we are. Fantastic. Have those six-pounder howitzers got into the action yet? Or are they just still back here? Come on, six-pounders. You, you can do it, guys. You can do it. <laughs> They're fresh. I just wish they could walk a little bit faster. They walk so slow. Like, so unbelievably slow. But finally, the battle is going to start raging over this ridge. As you can see, these chasseurs getting into the fight. Firing away. For some reason, the musket sounds have stopped again, even though we just heard the cannon shots. Very weird. It seems to go in and out of doing that. Ah, here we go. Just need to press on the units. We hear a few. Not all of them, though. There they are. Firing away. Pushing the Prussians back to the ridge. And the Prussians are now going to have to completely try and defend this ridge, which is going to be a decent uh, enough task for them. But as you can see, they've left this side completely open. So if they do decide to fully focus on this ridge, they've got to be very sir, careful that the, the French players of Carl and this guy do not push across here and just completely envelop this flank. And I'm surprised that they have no troops here to defend this border. Because as you can see, the chasseurs, here they come. Across the river, across the bridge, crossing a bridge at Arcola. Now, that is pure history for you. They did manage to bring those Prussian fusiliers. They are going to fall back. But with the flanking movements going on by everyone over here, it's going to be very, very tough for them to be able to do anything. So basically, and with this amount of cavalry, all the Portuguese and French players need to do is engage these guys in a couple of volleys, then charge their cavalry through, and they will rout these guys for fun. Um, and vice versa, of course, and vice versa for the other players. But as you can see, these musketeers getting nicely shredded. Here come some lancers charging down the hill, coming out of the smoke. These chasseurs running away now. Do not want to get involved with those lancers, do they? Very good micro from that player there. Very nice indeed. Um, and over here you can see that these troops are ready to cross. They've just left it pretty much undefended again. They did have... Unless... Ah, uh, these guys must be hiding in the forest. That'll be... Um, that'll be what it is. 
Um, yeah, they must be hiding. So they are defending it, but hiding in the, the forest there. But as you can see, even though the Lancers did charge some chasseurs, because they were getting shot, they well, they routed already. But here come another Lancer regiment ready to go. Look at the amount of cavalry they've got in that far corner up there in the flank, ready to do some damage on the boys. Beautiful. Beautiful. It is a stunning game. Stunning game. One of the most stunning games. And one of the one of the games that you feel is most accurate in depicting <laughs> battles. Obviously, they're very fast and brutal. And uh, obviously, it's not the same amount of troops. But it always feels like you are on the battlefield there with them. Look at these boys readily spread out across this way to do some serious... That is a lot of chasseurs to do some damage to these boys if they come. And here are some more chasseurs. I don't know whether those are Carls. I believe they are most likely Carls. Or are they this? They're probably this players. These are probably Carl's chasseurs up here. Because he has his old guard and militia. And the artillery of Cheval is back in place. Firing at the six pounder horse artillery. And they have killed the horses now. So they can't actually move those anymore. That's one thing that's always a very annoying drag i find with the horse artillery if your horse gets killed they glitch out and will no longer pick up the cannons which is very annoying as you can see these french chasseurs fighting hard they are starting to wane but the amount of troops in the background oh, ready to step right in inside. once they rout is an obscene obscene amount and apparently so one of carl's chasseurs has routed because it charged that unit but that has disrupted that foot guard unit and he is bringing down more musketeers to fire upon this flank. But he's very, very focused on this flank and shoving troops into kind of a black hole, really. Like, he's bringing a lot of troops down that are taking damage just to kill these three little units of chasseurs. Um, which is not the most efficient use. But these chasseurs, down to 35, down to 47 and 40 and 39, and they're still not running. They are doing very well to stay around now over here there is this unit of silesian schutzen that's coming across to fire but that is not going to be a trouble for any of these guys at all that is not going to be a problem and here the artillery cheval keep on firing come on boys glorious fire fire glorious glorious and i don't even believe the six pounder horse artillery has started firing yet but as you can see, uh, the Portuguese player has managed to get his troops around. And look at all these chasseurs à cheval ready to go on top of a general with a little bit of experience. Very nice indeed. And here comes the infantry. They are exhausted, but they're going to have to get into the fight as quick as they can. And these Tiradors should be able to take some pot shots at the Prussian Fusiliers before they can shoot back with their rifle range. Very nice. And here comes... Some of these chasseurs, they are starting to retreat slightly. But, as you can see, it's a little bit of a trap. Because that was an amazing volley. Shredding some of those musketeers. And they retreat knowing that that was a slight mistake. Here comes the 6th Infantry Regiment, Legere. The Brave. I don't know what they're doing. But they're running out in front of their army. Probably trying to take some pot shots at these musketeers to put pressure on that flank. But as you can see, there are cannons now on this hill. So if they are going to charge the ridge, they are going to have to go into canister shot. Which is horrible to see. Very nice indeed though. But as you can see, these Silesian shuts in. Coming across the river, shot down and shot to pieces. And at this point, there is very little resistance left on this right hand side. This 12 pounder foot artillery, very unlikely to get there in time. How are the six pounder, his six pounder howitzers doing? They're still moving. Come on, boys, you can go, you can do it. If they were, if they were set up here though, they could do some serious damage to this. But here comes the advance of the Portuguese and the French lines up to the ridge, and they're actually on top of the mountain up here. So all they need to do is push these boys back. Come on, rifles. They are kind of behind a bit of a lump there, it looks like. So don't, they're not going to get many good shots off, unfortunately. I think he's realised that. 
and he's shoot, going to shoot these Prussian Fusiliers on this left-hand side. What a glorious battle so far, though, guys. And it's all crunch, scrunched up 4v4 in this corner. But as you can see, this central area is kind of left undefended right now. But the amount of cav that are available to these boys up here is obscene. Obscene amount of cav. And they are going to be doing some serious damage. Look at these chasseurs coming in to fire at the musketeers. Well, these boys are here to flank again. Very nice indeed. Portuguese infantry ready to go as well. Um, and this flank, although the Prussians seem to be winning... They are kind of enveloped in a bit of an L shape, which is a very decent um, formation for the flanking forces. And as you can see, that L shape is going to pay dividends right now as the cavalry begin their grand charge. Here they go. Even if they don't manage to get these guys in, uh, completely broken, they're going to be firing at them. And they are retreating now because they don't want to be fired at by the chasseur a cheval. One chasseur on foot is enough, boys. Not just, not with the chasseur a cheval, though. Well, look at those. These artillery a cheval doing some serious damage. And it looks like this area is slightly more undefended now than it was before. And killing that six-pounder horse artillery. So this re region should be free to, uh, to flood across once that horse artillery is destroyed. But as you can see, the chasseurs moving forward with a vengeance. The Tiradors getting their, getting their rifles reloaded, ready to go. Here we go, boys. Beautiful fields of green that will be stained soon with red, unfortunately, for all these boys out there fighting. And the Cav constantly harassing this Prussian army. And as you can see, this kind of flank of the Prussians is kind of... Starting to become enveloped by a huge horde of cavalry and chasseurs, as you can see. It's a very strong and tactical move there made by the French players indeed. Very nice indeed. Very good. Enveloping them fully will be very hard, though. They've still got to break through here to envelop them fully. But as you can see... How it's the shots now going off, trying to sh kill that general, but he runs away instead. And look at this. Here they are, boys. The squares of Prussia trying to hold out against the chasseurs. But obviously, not managing to hold out, not managing to hold out too well. Over here, we have nothing going on. On the far right flank, let's see what's going on. The inf Portuguese infantry attacking these Prussian fusiliers as they fire back in anger. They are exhausted, though. The Tiradors still managing to get some decent shots off on these guys, even though they are kind of in a very nice uh, position, like in the sunken road. Which is a decent position, really. But as you can see, um, Brandenburg Uhlans are running through, General Staff running through, and some decent fighting going on up here. As the Chasseur à Cheval charge once again. Look at this. The Grand Chasseur charge. Trying to break these Prussian oh, fusiliers. And as I said, without that cavalry um, support, these guys, these Prussian fusiliers can't form square. So they will be shredded by cavalry. And they can rout really easily, like we saw in the last battle, guys, where those, that Prussian army just fully routed without that much damage being done to it. Just because the guys couldn't form square and the cavalry forced them into submission. So... Here go the French cavalry. Fight, my boys. Fight. Fight, boys. Kill the Prussian fusiliers. Kill them all. Fantastic. And you can see this Prussian, this Prussian player still exists up here. But he is practically shut off from the rest of the army. Now that grand charge has gone in. And look at them. They're running in full retreat. And basically what that means is that this... Uh, center of their line has been crumbled guys absolutely crumbled fantastic 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 tactics there very nice and you can see the chasseurs firing away at these boys trying to get rid of them as the howitzer shots rain down upon them brutal howitzer shots very nice indeed Portuguese players pushing forward he's trying to run away 
with the rest of his chasseurs, but I'm sure these chasseurs are cheval will have something to say about that. Although there are some hussars left over here, I'm not sure why they are not being used because they need to be used. And as you can see, this chasseur has broken through completely and killing the artillery. And he's probably going to go for that general staff. Yes, as you can see, this whole flank has had to be abandoned by the Prussians because of the astute moves of the French and Portuguese. What a fantastic, fantastic flanking maneuver. And we saw a proper river push. How you need to do a river push, guys. Very nice, very good river push. Very good indeed. So, as you can see, the Prussians in full flight, but with cavalry behind their lines, there is not much else that they can really do, apart from try and consolidate their lines. But there is not much they can do with more chasseurs flooding across the river. These howitzers pounding the shots down upon them. And the, the rest of the French army just needs to hold. And then when the crucial moment comes, push across this river and destroy this flank once and for all. But for now, they are pretty much fully encircled. And as you can see, the chasseurs not even going into melee, just firing at the Hussars. And they are going to do some serious, serious damage to those poor Hussars with nothing left to do. They can't save their general anymore. Here come some more Hussars coming round from this flank. So they might be able to save them, but there isn't much else they can do. These Chasseurs probably should go for a charge on these Prussian Fusiliers as the Portuguese player is charging. See, this Prussian player now is fully surrounded. The Portuguese player behind him and the French players in front of him. You can see the howitzer shots going off in the distance. Very nice. Oh, that was a brutal one. Absolutely shredding the middle of this unit. Brutal. And the Chasseurs retreating. Ah, so these are Carl's units, as you can see. The ones where you can see where they're going are Carl's units. As well as these ones. So maybe I should have been doing this throughout the <laughs> throughout the battle, but no well. too late now. But as you can see, this the cavalry, the grand cavalry charge, has has been broken. Um, but there is still hope left for the Prussians because these guys, uh, the French, really don't have much cavalry left, if any. You can't see any. So that grand cavalry charge did a lot of damage. But getting rid of all your cavalry when you have predominantly chasseurs is a tough, tough fight. So they're going to have to rely on these infantry of the Portuguese to deal with any cavalry if they do come. But as I say, the Prussians don't have much cavalry. They have some, just not, not much. Um, they still have their infantry. But they, they now, in the, in the art of uh, flanking the Prussians, are getting squeezed themselves, as you can see. They're getting charged by the Prussians, by a large Prussian force. So the French players are moving. Karl is moving to try and save them, which is a great move. He needs to do that. And also, <coughs> excuse me, put pressure on this Prussian who is left just holding the bridge, but nothing much else. And as you can see, the French player coming around this side, ready to flank them fully and fully squeeze them to death because there's more and more chasseurs coming across this river, ready to do some damage. And look at those shots, howitzer shots. Brutal howitzer shots. And here comes Carl with his play with his troops, ready to try and save the Prussian player, uh, the Portuguese player over here. Save him from the fate of death, because he has been himself surrounded when he was surrounding others a second ago. But does manage to get into square just at the last second, fighting these Hussars. But it's a brutal square. They have a glorious uniform, those actually. I love those uniforms. Here is the grand square. As people fire down upon the battlefield. Beautiful. But unfortunately, the Portuguese player, although they are in square, is starting to lose a lot of troops to these chasseurs. And Carl is up here trying to push back this Prussian player to get to them to try and put the hammer down and finally restore some order to the battlefield. But yes, Prussian, uh, French player again 
charging forward, trying to do damage to these musketeers, um, while the Portuguese infantry comes round to try and flank. Very nice indeed. Very nice indeed. Here come the howitzers. Firing upon the enemy. That is a beautiful shot, isn't it? With the sun? Or not? No, we can't get the sun in it. But oh well. We don't need the sun. Over here, the Prussian player has managed to clean up that Portuguese sir, resistance. Sir, so that is a I'm big win for attack. Prussia on this side. A very big win indeed. Carl has brought his chasseurs up, ready to fire into these lines and do some serious damage. As well as the Portuguese Cazadores still fighting up here. Still fighting gloriously. The battle still rages by the bridge. This has been a back and forth battle for days, guys. Brutal, brutal battle. And the gunpowder smoke rises in the sky as we fire upon the enemy. Fantastic. But you can see the littered dead all across this side here. This has been a brutal battlefield over here. Very nice indeed. And here comes Carl's infantry pushing across the river into those Prussian fusiliers. But he's leading with the militia, with those revolutionary cockades. So the two old guard, although they've taken some damage, have not taken a huge amount, unlike the militia who are going to charge directly in, I believe. So very nice. Let's see them go. Come on, the militia. Let's go, boys. For the revolution. Hello. For the revolution. There, the officer, the officer still exists. He's still alive. Come on, boys. Straight into the Prussian fusiliers. And the old guard ready to put the hammer down. Get set, boys, for absolute glory as the old guard fire. Come on, boys. Fire away. Fire away, boys. Will you fire? There we go. Brutal. Oh, look. It scythed down those Prussian fusiliers there and musketeers. Very nice indeed. The militia has served its purpose. And here they come across the bridge. Bow. That was a big shot there. Very nice indeed. Straight in the middle of that square. How are we doing on the left flank? Carl has managed to push these guys back. It seems very nice indeed. And the Portuguese infantry assaulting up the middle into the musketeers. But the cannons, the six-pounder horse artillery, are still around. And they are doing some damage indeed to these poor infantrymen forced to face them. Watch them fire away. Come on, boys. Get reloaded. But you can see on the map, this L shape is forming. These guys are in full encirclement mode. Very strong. You guys aren't firing. You decided not to fire, my friends. I oh, know. Here they go. Fire. And they just shot half of their own troops. <laughs> They still did fire at that infantry, so that's still a decent result for them. But on this side, as you can see, there's still a lot of Prussian troops. And the artillery a cheval of Karl is ready to go up here, ready to pound them into oblivion. And they are going to go set up here to try and put some canister shot in the side of these boys. Now over here, see, the old guard are still firing away as those chasseurs have charged in. Come on, old guard, let's go, boys! Fire! Fire! Why wouldn't you fire? <laughs> well, they fully surround. There they are. There they go. They finally fired. Here they go. Fantastic. Beautiful. The Prussians on this flank are slowly now getting pushed back on ground that the French haven't seen all battle. They have pushed forward onto it and they are pushing this Prussian player back. The only hope the Prussians really have now is surviving the assault on the right. But the assault on the right seems to be going pretty well. And as you can see, the artillery a cheval are firing dead into those musketeers with canister shot. There they go, shredding. I don't know why they always fire to the side of the unit. That always annoys me with the canister shot. Why would they not fire into the middle? But it's just something the game does. It's very weird. 
as you can see, this flank completely, completely battered. And the old guard still firing away at the musketeers as the militia come back for a final revolutionary glorious charge. Come on, boys. Win out for us, for the revolution. No. They lost. They ran away. But unfortunately for this musketeer, it was one step too far. One step too far. And these musketeers are also going to be running very shortly. Canister shot has a huge effect on morale. And they are very upset that they are getting shot with canister shot. Very much like these Portuguese troops. But they are still standing in the middle. I don't know how. How can you still be standing even though the cannons are firing upon you? The cannons have been destroyed. Is that the, um, is that the key to this? No, they are running away. The cannons are running. They're in full retreat. And as you can see, this Prussian player has withdrawn a load of his troops from the this flank to try and face the threat that now faces them over here. But surely it is not going to be enough. But we will find out very soon indeed. Because this battle is coming to a brutal and glorious conclusion. Here go the infantry firing away at the musketeers. Very nice indeed. And then they're going to turn back. The six-pounder horse artilleries are retreating. They do only have two cannons left on this troop, though. But as you can see, the old guard are going to be doing their worst. Getting rid of these troops, trying to fire at them. Look at the gunpowder smoke. You can barely see who they're even firing at. They're coming forward once again. And here comes the general to try and disrupt those Prussian fusiliers as the French move forward. Very nice. Finally fully taken this. Oh, the howitzers doing damage on their own troops. Oh, God. Finally, finally pushing forward and trying to break this mob of troops that remain. Come on, old guard. Get going. Fire at them. Look at this glorious battle, boys. Glorious. Just admire it for a second. The glorious warfare that is in, in front of us. Fantastic. This Prussian player still has some troops here, but these guys are hot on their heels. And of course, the chasseurs are over here as well. But they are in full, full flight. Imagine if the French still had a couple of units of cav. They would be in absolute disarray, this Prussian force. And they are getting purged from the battlefield by the French galloping forward supported by the remnants of that glorious Portuguese army but look at this guys just before it ends look at the fighting that has gone on over here this is absolutely crazy it is brutal and then all the way up this ridge on this ridge over here in fact but this is where the main block of fighting and this body littered Across a whole, whole battlefield. Then up here as well. Brutal fighting. Then across the back as well. Which is fantastic. But I don't know why this Prussian player runs now. It is clear that they have lost. <laughs> I believe they're probably running for the town to try and fortify some buildings. But with the artillery that's left on the French side. The artillery of Cheval and all the artillery left over here. I don't believe that that, is gonna save, that would save them anyway. But as you can see, the final, the French troops getting rid of these final groups of musketeers. Here comes the final volley. Fire, boys, fire! Fire, they fired at the wrong people. They're running anyway. Oh, well. <laughs> and as you can see, the general's being used to try and deal some damage and get rid of these six-pounder horse artilleries that are left. But the triumphant French march gloriously forward. I want to see the dead bodies up here. Oh, God. So many littered across the side of the mountain. Um, not many on the bridge. So, not like the real Arcola. But the general tries to break this square. Well, as he sees, there is not much he can do to break the square. But this general is going to come in and finally get rid of Gula's died, oh no, probably, yeah, probably over there due to the square. But that's not going to matter. There's still, still just one unit to go. 
this final unit of six pound of force artillery. What a glorious battle. Very, very tactical. Very nice indeed. Streaming across this river here. It just shows, goes to show you what you can do with one river crossing. If you manage to get one river crossing, guys, what you can do. And that is a lot. You can do a lot. There we are. There it goes. Fantastic. And this is a bloody, bloody battle. Look at that. Ghoul, 2,000 kills. Carl, 1,700 kills. Fantastic. Uh, Leopold and Ciara giving a great hand as well. But decent kills on both sides. 2,000, 3,000. Well, you can say that's 3,000, 5,000. 6,000 kills, guys. That is brutal. Brutal. Um, and then on this side... 2,600, 3,400, 4,100. Wow. So there's a lot of dead bodies on both sides, guys. Absolutely brutal. But a great, great battle. Fantastic battle to watch. Really good fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you again on the next video.